Live. Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants, blowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and end and dandruff treatment shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, our lovely star of the Broadway play, Once More with Feeling, Miss Arlene Francis. And now the star of another Broadway hit, Once More, <laughs> that's mine, Once More with Feeling, Drink to Me Only, Mr. Tom Poston. <laughs> I certainly want to thank you for that, love. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present a star of radio and television and the Leroy Hospital back with us again. We're glad to see her as Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you all out there for your wonderful, warm messages. I'm sure they helped me get well soon. And I missed the whole panel. Uh, among them, very specially, the one who's going to sit next to me tonight, Mr. Bennett Surf. Let's have you back. And now, our very dearly loved panel moderator, whose rendition on another network early in the week of the T for Two <laughs> Cha Cha <laughs> set back television at least 30 years, <laughs> Mr. John Charles <laughs> Dale. Bennett forgets that render means to tear asunder. That's exactly what I did. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, some interesting occupations and some nice people who've come with them. And our purpose is, as usual, to give the panel a rough time, except for Dorothy Kilgallen. It's nice to have her back, and uh, so we'll ask her the questions in a gentle voice, anyway. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger in just... And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come out and sign in, please? <coughs> Duchess? County. County? No, Geyer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, miss or Mrs. Geyer? It's Mrs. Geyer. Mrs. Geyer, where are you from? Mrs. From Ogden, Utah. Ogden, Utah. Well, we haven't had too many people from that part of the country. It's nice to have you with us. Mrs. Geyer, the panel. Panel, Mrs. I Geyer. Yes. Now, would you join me over here, please? Tell me, Mrs. Geyer, do you uh, know how we keep score? Yes, I do. Fine, then let's let the folks at home and our friends in the audience here in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right, uh, panel, we'll give you the usual bit of help. Mrs. Geyer is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mrs. Geyer, are people entertained by what you do? No. Uh, if I may have a small conference. <laughs> yes. Uh, Arlene, this is an area which we don't want to be misleading. At the same time, we don't want to cut off an area of questioning and then have you charge us subsequently with giving a wrong answer, which will at least close the door Shall for I you. Shall I rephrase the question? Yes, that'll be fine. That'll get me off the hook, too. Thank you. <laughs> Do people take pleasure in uh, your services? Yes. You hope so, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Do they come to you for your services? Yes, they do. Do both men and women enjoy your services? Yes, they do. Uh, would you say that whatever your service is, it is an adult service rather than a service for children? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, would I be correct in assuming that there is no product concerned with your service? That's correct. 
Uh, do you go to homes to give your services? No, I do not. One down and nine to go, Mr. Poston. Uh, when you say that you uh, deal in adult services, I take it possibly that there may be children involved. There may be. Uh, do, uh, uh, well, now, let me say this. Here again, Tom, we can get in trouble. It's not beyond the possibility of doubt that, uh, Children may be recipients of this kind of service, but uh, considering the normal span of years which we would ascribe to childhood, in this particular case, I would say that they are not identified with the service. Here. I wonder if I could ask the Duchess to give that kind of a well-delineated answer instead of those <laughs> yeses. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Geyer, yeah. do you uh, sometimes perform a service mutually and simultaneously for both men and women? Simultaneously, you mean the service to be applied to both men and women at exactly the same time? I believe that's what that word that means. That is a very good question, and that gets you a no. <laughs> Thank you very much. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you do your work indoors, Mrs. Geyer? I do. You said that the people come to you. Are you apt to see them one at a time? Yes. That's customary. Do you talk to them? Yes. Do you give them any advice or counsel of any kind? Yes. Well, now, here again... Oh, my, why didn't I sit <laughs> over that? Actually, the talking to them would be by rote. The advice and counsel as such would be gratuitous and not necessarily connected specifically with the service for which they have come. I don't Therefore, care as long as she gives it to them. No, they... Uh, you know, I could give advice in the same term of reference. <coughs> right. Three down and seven and to go, Mr. Sir. Sir. Do, John. Uh, before I ask you any questions, Mrs. Geyer, you must tell tell me, because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering just as I am, what, is, what does that duchess in quotation marks mean? Uh, it's a nickname. Oh, it's a nickname. Mm -hmm. And has nothing to do with the work that you perform. No, not at all. Mrs. Geyer, do you lay hands at any time on your victims? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You do? You touch, the, you touch yes. them? Yes. Would you be apt to touch one part of their uh, physiognomy more than others? <laughs> Don't look at me! <laughs> we'll have to have a small conference. That's obviously Too bad it isn't colored. Bennett, would you state your question again? <laughs> I, I will put the question differently, since I do not care to make any contestant on this program blush. And I thought you were blushing a bit. Do you, are you more apt to touch one part of a person's body than, the, uh, than another? No. No, not in the main. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Nor in Connecticut, for that matter, Miss Francis. It's good all over, Mrs. Guy. <laughs> Uh, is there something therapeutic about what you do? What is therapeutic? Specifically meant to be therapeutic. Do you feel, does the customer feel better afterwards? Yes, well, you know, you can't fix this one up. I'm sorry, Miss <laughs> Arlene. Therapeutic being a quasi or medical You want to term. make it just 250 instead of five up, John? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's five down and five to go, Mr. Post. Uh, Duchess, mm. when you, uh, do you customarily touch your... Victims, as Mr. Surf said. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, does this make them feel better? No, that would be therapeutic. Now, come on, I rephrased your question. Well... Oh, dear me, here we go again, eh? <laughs> now, since we've gotten into non-medical terms, let us assume that uh, the protagonist has come for the service. Having received same, and having received it uh, at expert hands, we will assume that the protagonist has a sense of well-being as a result of having received the service from expert hands. Yes. Does the... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> does the... Uh, does uh, your work involve uh, uh, talking to your, uh, your customers and touching them at the same time? No. No. That makes it six down and four to go. Miss Kilgallen, I'm going to give you one minute more. Mrs. Geyer, you said that you touch them. Does anything else touch them? Anything inanimate, perhaps? Yes. Mm -hmm. And in 
so far as they are touched by both you and this inanimate object, are they changed in some way or made to look or feel different? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, do you hold something in your right hand or the hand you use most? I'm right-handed. You're right-handed. Mm -hmm. Do you hold something in your right hand and you uh, apply something all over them? No. Well, no. you said that you I touched them all over. No. Well, no, no, we didn't say all over. The well, she question said no was place? on the issue one part more than another. Oh, well, can they decide on what part it is? Yes, can I would think that's a likely idea. Can the customer decide what part it is? Yes. Oh. Now, oh, we'll let you, you go on, Dorothy, because the, the, the basis of your question, will you get an oh, affirmative I, reply I to? The I assumption can. of all over, we'll ignore. Yes, thank you. Uh, in other words, they can choose the spot that you operate on, is that it? Right. Oh, yes. do, you, do you use a needle in your work or yes. colors? Are you a tattoo, tattoo artist? Yes. Tattoo. <laughs> Very good, Dorothy. Say, I think I'll go off to the hospital for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. What's was the most wonderful. popular tattoo? What's the most popular tattoo? Oh, a dagger through a heart. A dagger through a heart. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, thank you. We had a wonderfully interesting time. And thank it was you very much. Good guest. Hope you had fun. Nice to have you here. <laughs> well, panel, I didn't think you were going to make that one for a while, but let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Dick Winslow, right? <laughs> Where are you from? Jennings, Louisiana, Mr. Davis. You're from Jennings, Louisiana? Yes. Ah, oh, well, that's nice. Nice country down there, the Louisiana countryside. Mr. Winslow, the panel. Panel, Mr. Mr. Winslow, would you join me over here, sir? Do you know how we keep score? That I do. Fine, then let's let the folks in the audience here and the people at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, Mr. Winslow is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning well, where we left off. Mr. Cerf. Mr. Winslow, uh, you're a manly, handsome fellow. Uh, do you perform a service of some kind? Yes, sir. Is it a service that you can perform for both sexes? Yes. Uh, can you perform this service in Louisiana? No. You can't? Small conference. The basic service, I think, and Mr. Winslow would agree, will agree with me, the basic service could be performed in Louisiana, yes. Well, do you say, then, that the reason you said no to Louisiana, does this mean that this is possibly a service that involves moving about? Yes. Do you... What? Excuse Salary, me. Salary, yes. Uh, do you travel, then, in the work that you're performing, the service you perform? That's right. Is part of the service you perform, in, uh, is that traveling an essential part of it? Is that yes. correct? Well, well now, Bennett, yeah, I don't want to mislead you. This, the service itself, as I said, could be performed in Louisiana. In the instant case, travel plays a part, in, an important part, in the performance of the service. Do you travel uh, by air? Yes. You do? Have you got something to do with one of the uh, recognized commercial airlines? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Do you work for a non-profit making organization? No, ma'am. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Poston. May I ask if there's a product involved in what you do? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you something other than a licensed pilot? I didn't understand you. Are you something other than a licensed pilot? That's right. Would you be something other than the crew of any airplane? Would you be something other than crew of any airplane? Well, let's airplane? say the crew in the cockpit. Yes, that's right. The crew in the cockpit, yes. I would be something Would other. you ever be found in the galley? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. 
Uh, would you have anything to do, Mr. Winslow, if it's not commercial aircraft, would it have anything to do with carnivals or the entertainment field in general? Yes, sir. Uh, it has something to do with, uh, with entertainment. That's right. Might you be involved in some kind of trick flying that is exhibited somewhere in carnivals or things? Five down and five not. to go, Miss Fred. By that, we may, we may accept the fact that you are not shot out of a cannon or anything like that. You are not. That's right. Nevertheless, you are in the air when you are working. Yes, ma'am. Uh, is there anything connected with trapeze work that you would be associated with? No, ma'am. Six down and four to go, Mr. Post. Are you suspended directly to a heavier-than-air object? <laughs> what does that mean? Hey? Why? Like a flagpole? Is it heavier than air rather than light? Is it something like that? He's a flagpole, sir. No. No, 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 are we? Oh, he's no. Well, now we'll have to flip a couple of cards there on that one anyway. Mr. Poston, do you want to continue? <laughs> sure. Then I take it that you are involved in uh, uh, rising from the surface of the earth on a lighter-than-air object. No, sir. Then you... Here we go. No, sir. Eight out of two to go, Miss Kilgallen. I have straightened out whether he works with heavier-than-air or lighter-than-air craft. Has that been established? Oh, oh, you, you well, said yes. I thought... Oh, I see. I thought you said no. I'm sorry. It's no to lighter-than-air or low... low. It's no to both? It's yes. No to lighter-than-air. But it but was yes, yes to, to heavier. Uh, heavier than well, the, the yes to the heavier-than-air was somewhat confused because the question was, was he suspended by something from heavier-than-air under the glockenspiel? And I said Murgatroyd. I well, that in the <laughs> Mr. Winslow, does the craft that you are in some way connected with, uh, or disconnected from, uh, is it heavier than aircraft of yes, some ma type, and it's non-commercial? Uh, because if it isn't, minute. you're sitting next to our the leader question. right now. Well, he says it's not. <laughs> the question asked was, did he work with a, one of the commercial Recognized airlines, commercial and the answer was no. That airline. was earlier on, yes. Yes. Uh, do you, at some time, leave the ship in your work? Once in a while, he has to get away. <laughs> is that not what I meant, John? Oh, you mean as a part of his work? I mean as part of his act. Oh, that's no. nine down and one as to go. As a paratrooper, you know. A paratrooper, yes. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. We have only one thing left. Uh, do you work possibly with any kind of models? Ten down and no more. I didn't mean live models. Yes, we. Oh, we assume that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Winslow plays the piano on an airplane, which is owned by a hotel in Las Vegas, the Hacienda, and they fly back and forth between Los Angeles... Burbank. And Burbank. And Las Vegas. And oh, Las Vegas, and he entertains for a, an hour and ten minutes in the airplane while the people go to and fro. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel are asked to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds in place, yes, panel. John. I Good. can't see through this thing. Fine. Come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please. Paddle, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and uh, we'll begin it all with uh, Miss Kilgallen. Are you a female performer? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sir? Are there more than one of you on, up there? No, darling, no. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Have you appeared as a television star? Yes. Miss well. Francis. <laughs> Have you appeared as a motion picture actress? Never, never. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you now appearing in a Broadway play? Yes. Mr. Sir? Is it a comedy? Yes. Miss Francis? Are uh, you co-starred with another person who has also appeared in television? Yes. Jolly good, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Post, do you want to finish it up, Miss Arlene? 
Do you want to take a I'd shot? I'd like to keep her on forever. She's such a great entertainer. If it's who I think it is. Shall I go on? Yeah. Tom, do you want to take it? No, I'd like you to. Is it uh, a young lady that is uh, co-starring in 509? Yeah. Oh. Is it Imogene Coco? Yeah. <laughs> Go starring with Peggy Wood in The Girls with in Peggy. 509. Yeah, funny. I tried. You did that, darling. You did beautifully, too. Wonderful to have you with us. <laughs> You've done very well, panel, I must say. So we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. Now, let's see what we can do with the final challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Tom? Collins? <laughs> well, nice to meet you. Let to be here. <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Collins? London, England. London, England. Right. Well, it is indeed very nice to have you here. Welcome to America. How long have you been with us? Uh, just a few days. Just a few, few days. days. I've got to spend five weeks here. Oh, wonderful. Well, Mr. Collins, the panel. Panel, Mr. Collins. Can you join me over here, please, sir? Thank you. Mr. Collins, do you know how we keep score coming yes. all the way from London, England? Fine. Yes, I see this is nothing. Good. Well, let's let the audience in the theater and the people at home know exactly what your line is. Colonel, Mr. Collins is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Mr. Poston. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Collins, do you, uh, uh, is there a product involved in what you do? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. It sounds like, <laughs> like a good profit, the way you say it. Uh, then you deal in services. I do, yes. Does your work take you from place to place? Yes. Uh, so you're out of doors a good bit. I am. In that lovely London rain. Times. <laughs> Had a bit of it today for uh, you, didn't we? I've seen some here. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go about, do you visit people? No. no. Two down a date to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Collins, does the work that you do require you to don some kind of attire different from what you're wearing tonight? No, no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Collins, are there people in America that have the kind of job that you hold down in England? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, does it help people, the work that you do? I, well, I like to think so. I think so. Uh, is your service uh, for men and women for both? For men and women both, yes. Do they uh, call upon you for your services? They do. Okay. Uh, uh, do you... Um, consult with them in some way regarding the work that you're going to do for them? No. No, I no, wouldn't say so. No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Post. Is your, does your work involve uh, inspections in, in any way? No. No. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then you can perform a service for people without their being present, is that correct? No. No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Collins, do you... Uh, do you touch the people that you're performing the service no. for? Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Do you teach them anything, Mr. Collins? I think I do. I think I do. Would you, <laughs> <laughs> would you say, then, that there is some form of instruction in the work that you do? Yes. It would be a result of the work he does, yes. Uh, are they able, therefore, to do something after they have seen you that they could not do before they had seen you? No. So they I'm could do it before, but do it better after. We've run out of time, and it all will come clear when I tell you that Mr. Collins is a sightseeing guide, conducts tours John in Gould. England. Isn't that Gould. something? Yeah. Fine. And you'll get the full bet, because <laughs> we run out of time. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Thank you. Thank you. You know how it is. They do drive on the other side of the street over there. Yes. 
<laughs> Collins had a bit of trouble. He didn't know which door to go out of, but he found the door, and he's merrily on his way. And I might say again, Dorothy, it's wonderful to have you back with us. And Indeed. Mr. Poston, it's nice to have you there on the panel, too. On this happy note, may I say, this is John Daly saying good night to Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, John. Good night, Tom. Bon chance. Good night, Arlene, and the same. Good night, Dorothy. Good night. Happy hits to you both. Thank you. Star <laughs> of you. Good night, Bennett. Good night, Dorothy. And John, would you sing one bar of tea for two for us? No. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line? If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line? CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. This has been a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten speaking. <laughs>